Greetings and hello, I'm James Robert Lay, and welcome to another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast. Today's episode is part of the Inside Digital Growth series, and I look forward to answering a question from Alexander, who was asking how their credit union can build trust in a digital world when we're not able to make relationships like we used to in a physical world, you know, the good old handshake. And this is such a great question because trust is the currency on how we trade, on how we do business in a digital world. And right now, there is a trust gap within financial services. A report from Facebook found that 53% of millennials feel like they have no one they can trust for financial guidance. It gets worse because only 8% of millennials feel like they can trust financial institutions, i.e. banks and credit unions for that guidance. So where are the people going to get answers to their financial questions, particularly if they are, say, in that millennial or Gen Z market? Well, they're going to TikTok, they're going to Instagram, they're going to YouTube, they're going to Google. But the question is, is your financial brand there to offer the people help? Are you there as a leader, as a lender, as an advisor, as a marketer to give people hope? If you're not just yet, there's no better time than now to start thinking about how you and your financial brand can build trust in a digital world where people, yes, people still do business with people. It is just the way that we connect with people that has really transformed. Because when you're thinking about trust, it can take days, weeks, months, maybe even years to develop enough trust, to get to the point to have made enough deposits into a consumer's trust fund that sits between their ears to ultimately transform and influence their buying decision, their purchase behavior to go in one way or another when it comes to their money. In a recent podcast episode, I was talking about the complexities of money and the challenges, the inherent challenges around that. On the other hand, as we've seen from the recent bank failures, particularly being driven from communication in a digital world, trust can be depleted in seconds. And that's why, once again, when, when we think about trust, I think the best context to frame this conversation through is like making deposits into the trust fund that sits between people's ears. You make enough positive deposits, you can influence their behavior from a positive perspective. But if you're making a withdrawal, things aren't so good. So before I dive into some thinking from Alexander, if you have a question that you'd like to get answered on a future podcast, text that question to me directly on my cell phone. It's 415-579-3002. It's 415-579-3002. I look forward to answering the questions that you might have on a future podcast episode. So let's dive into Alexander's question about building trust in a digital world and how might that be different than how we do it in the physical world where it typically is framed around a handshake. In my first book, Banking on Digital Growth, I shared a strategic thinking model called the Pyramid of Human Relationships. And, and in this pyramid, respect is at the foundation. All relationships start from a perspective of respect. And, and when we're thinking about financial services, it's through the lens of people, help me when I have a need as a person, that is when you have a need as a financial brand. At the pinnacle of the pyramid of human relationships, it's love. And we look at love through the lens of commitment. I'm going to commit to apply for a loan at your financial brand when I click the apply button, but not just when I click the apply button, when I actually get through the entire application. And to bridge the gap between respect and love, it comes down to trust. And trust is built upon two things. Number one, it's what you say. And number two, it's what you do. Actions and words. And there are five pillars or principles, if you will, that your financial brand can establish and expand to build trust with account holders and even prospective account holders through digital experiences. The first pillar of digital trust, it's simplicity. I just shared a podcast on the subject of simplicity. And this is why we must ask, how have we simplified the complex nature of money to provide people with clarity. 
And one of the fastest ways that you can simplify your website to provide clarity, to transform confusion, to give people help, to give people hope, is to transform all of those old bullet points and the long text paragraphs that you have into some headlines and related iconography. Why though? How, how can this simple transformation transform confusion into clarity to provide people with help and hope? Well, consider this. The human brain processes images 60,000 times faster than it does written content. And 93% of all communication is visual. My family, we just got back from a vacation and a digital detox in Cancun. And we had an opportunity to go out and see one of the seven wonders of the world, Chichen Itza. It's the old Mayan runs. And you look at the way that they communicated, it was essentially through iconography. Same thing with the Egyptians, it's visual images. But when you have these long paragraphs or bullet point features around a product, we're most likely inadvertently adding complexity to the buying journey compared to when we use imagery, iconography, even video. So there's an opportunity here to apply ancient wisdom in this modern day of AI because communication is all about the human experience. And once again, we have to remember, trust is the sum of what you say and what you do. And by just changing the way that we communicate with people on our website and replacing these text blocks with pictures and iconography, this is exactly how we can simplify digital experiences. The second pillar of digital trust really kind of add, you know, adds to the first, it is content. And that is because content is the primary way that we communicate digitally. Now there can be different types of content. There can be written content, visual imagery, as I was just referencing. There can be video content. There can be audio content like this podcast. But content is how we place deposits into the trust fund that sits between people's ears. And when we're thinking about context and communication through the lens of financial services, the opportunity is to establish a culture committed to helping first and selling second, not just within marketing, but also within the leadership team, the lending team, the advisory team. You see, when everyone is committed to helping first and selling second, creating content that does just that, that helps first and sells second, it gets exponentially easier. I think about over the years, you know, starting to work with marketing teams, marketing teams would get this idea and they would be on board. But then when they took, you know, well, we want to help first and sell second. When they took that back into their lending team or they took that back into their financial advisory team, or they took that back into the small business team or leadership team, there was a knowledge gap. What do you mean help first sell second? How are we going to get loans out of that? And that's because the, the mindset of others within the organization was still rooted in the past. But when we start thinking about, once again, the cognitive load, as I was speaking about on a previous podcast, the inherent complexity, when, when we lean into people's pain, that's where we can begin to really help first and sell second. Because the sell, quote unquote, is not a sell. It's just the next step in a consumer's buying journey where we've already established and have expanded trust because of the deposit deposits that we've placed into their trust fund. That's why this third pillar of digital trust, it's compassion. So traditionally, historically, we position, we communicate our financial products through a very narcissistic lens. I was just recently facilitating a workshop and there was a CEO in a breakout session with me and I asked them uh, and, and, and the exercise, we all went to a breakout session. The exercise was tell your, your breakout room why you should open an account or apply for a loan at your financial brand. And 
the CEO begin to explain why. And I stopped them probably three seconds in. I said, can I just pause you on this and you know, give you another perspective? And he was talking about his rates and he was talking about his service. He was talking about some of his product features, his big product features. I said, yeah. So I paused him. I said, who are you talking about right now? Because I'm talking about our credit union. And it was like, that's when the light bulb went off. And I explained very kindly. I said, if you transform that perspective and communicate why you do what you do to solve the pains of people, you'll connect with people in a much deeper, more empathetic level. This is why I talk a lot about digital empathy because empathy is the antithesis of narcissism. Empathy becomes a strategic competitive advantage, particularly in the age of AI. And there's no better way to increase digital empathy than through consumer personas. Consumer personas being a strategic framework that provide clarity into the questions, concerns, the pains that people have on one side of the spectrum, and then on the other, looking at their hopes, their dreams, the future that they want to create. This is something I talked about in episode 115. And that moves us into the fourth pillar of digital trust. Because we move from compassion into connection. And that's because people connect with people. Something is so important for all of us to remember in the age of AI. People connect with people. They do not connect with technology. People connect with people through technology, but people do not connect with technology. So when we look at connection, we have to be aware of how we're communicating and even using people on our website. Do we even have images of people on our website to begin, do we have traces of humanity, if you will? Is humanity even found on your website? And if we are using pe pictures of people on, 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 on your website, well, who are they? Are they the shiny, happy stock images that don't represent reality? They're insta-perfect, if you will. You see, in our digital secret shopping studies, we've, we've seen how consumers really pick up on this. They know if images of people are fake or if they're stock. And this is why I'm such a big advocate for financial brands to invest time. And I say invest time because it will take time to build up a library of photography, of images, of video, of real people who are informed by your primary consumer personas, those that you're looking to create value for. Where do we find these people? They're in your communities right now. They're your account holders. They're your teachers. They're your nurses. They're your small business owners. Let the people in the communities that you serve be the stars, be the heroes of the digital narratives and the stories that you tell. And all of this comes back into the fifth pillar here to build digital trust. It's to make a real commitment to use digital to guide people beyond financial stress towards an even bigger, better, brighter future. This is not about just simply dipping your toe in the water with digital. This is not about mobile banking. This is not about online banking. The commitment must be made for digital to become your primary channel for growth going forward. And I understand that for some, that's a very challenging subject to think about. Well, what about our branches? Your branches still play a role in this narrative. It's just that your, pro your branches are no longer your primary channel for growth. They are a supporting character to the digital channel, meeting people once again where they are. That requires change. And change can be hard. Change can be scary. Change can be, be painful even. But when we're thinking about this, this is cultural transformation. But it's deeper. It's not just cultural transformation. It's human transformation to help people internally break free from legacy thinking 
from systems that were built and rooted for the physical world, for branch cells, traditional broadcast marketing even. And a commitment like this, it takes time and it requires education. It requires coaching to help people see and to think and to feel. And that's the secret, to feel differently. Because the desire, the feeling, the emotion to do something different has to be greater than the, the, than the desire to remain the same. If that desire does not change, if that feeling does not change, the behavior and the actions that we take going forward into the future, it's the status quo. People need to see, think, feel, and when they feel different, that's when they do different. And that's the opportunity to transform the hearts and minds of people internally through education, and through coaching. So as we wrap up, any financial brand, your financial brand, can use these five pillars of trust to differentiate yourself in an industry that is plagued by a lack of trust. Because trust is the sum of two simple things. It's words, it's actions. And if you don't think that this industry is plagued by a lack of trust, I invite you to go look, get on Instagram, get on TikTok. Read the comments of real people about their experiences with financial brands. Get on Twitter. Be careful. It's a little toxic. But people are telling the truth. Even in one of the YouTube videos that we recently shared, someone made a comment about their bank is not there to help them. They believe that their bank is there to take advantage of them. And that's why we do what we do here. Transform banking for good. So what, what are your digital experiences? What are your digital channels, channels saying about your financial brand? Are you providing clarity or are you increasing confusion? Are you placing deposits into the trust fund of people or are you inadvertently making withdrawals? Text me. I want to hear from you. Text me, 415-579-3002. If you'd like to gain some objective perspective into some of these questions or text me, 415-579-3002. Send me a question that you'd like to gain some additional clarity around, and I look forward to answering it for you on a future podcast episode. Until next time, be well, do good, be the light.